الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا ودائيا الى الله باذنه والسراج منيرا اما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القران المجيد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ان ينصركم الله فلا غالب لكم وان يخذلكم فمن ذا الذي ينصركم من بعده وعلى الله فليتوكل المؤمنون We begin by saying all praises due to Allah. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the life that he has given to us. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making us Muslim, giving us iman and giving us the opportunity of coming to the masjid for our Jumu'ah salah. Around the world in a couple of days will be the New Year celebration that heralds the coming of the new academic year, the new Gregorian calendar year 2018. This is not a celebration for Muslims. Muslims do not celebrate New Year's Day. Not even if it is the Hijri New Year, as we had a couple of months ago, we know very well what our celebrations are. It is therefore sad that sometimes we find that our Muslim brothers and sisters will go to hotels and restaurants, pay exorbitant sums of money, and count down the new year with a toast of non-alcoholic champagne and uh, on the dance floor with a kiss and a toast and so on and so forth. Those things are for those who believe in them and who want to celebrate them. But they're not for us as believers. It's not part of our Islam to celebrate like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beckons us and asks us that when we have become believers, whether we have been born into this way of life or whether we have reverted into Islam, that we dive into this Islam wholeheartedly. And of course, one of the verses that reminds us of our, this comes in Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu dukhulu fi silmi kafata, kafata, wa la tattabi'u khutuwat al-shaytan, innahu lakum aduwu mubin. Allah says, O you who believe, enter into Islam wholeheartedly, completely, without reservation. One of the incidents the Mufassirin bring about this particular verse and its revelation is regarding some Jews, some of them being scholars like Abdullah bin Salam, who had converted and reverted from Judaism into Islam. But they had sought to hold on to some of their practices, such as the practice of the Saturday being the Sabbath and the practice of not eating the meat of the camel. And they thought that, you know, it is not haram in Islam to not work on the Sabbath. So therefore, we can still practice this Judaic law of having Saturday at the, at the Sabbath without breaking a law of Islam. And it's not compulsory that you eat the meat of camel. So if we refuse to eat the meat of camel, we are not doing anything haram and we are still fulfilling the Judaic law, the Jewish law that we used to follow before. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sought to dispel that attitude that we leave what we were doing before, we come into what we believe in now, whether it is we have come from a different religion to Islam or whether we have come from a situation of not knowing 
to a situation of understanding and knowing what is the right thing, yet want to hold on to those practices. It, of course, takes an effort. It is not easy to leave off those things that we enjoy from our previous lives. But this is what the dedication Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeks in us. That when we enter into Islam, we enter into Islam wholeheartedly. And in the same verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, لا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان Don't follow the footsteps of shaitan because it is shaitan who is making you think that I can still do both of them, like with Abdullah bin Salam and the others. I can still do both of them and still be a Muslim, a real, true Muslim dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's very important that we try to move away from these actions. It's sad, therefore, to see that happening. It's even more sad to see that in countries where there are Muslim majorities, more and more the celebration of the new year is taking on greater and greater importance. Not even the Hijri new year, but the Gregorian new year as well. Not that it is not important that we also think about our lives at this time. Because we do live in a part of the world where we, whether we like it or not, follow the Gregorian calendar. And this is the month of December. And in a couple of days' time, it will be the month of January. And it will be, instead of 2017, 2018. As believers, we should try our best to follow the Hijri calendar, so that especially when the important dates are coming up, the month of Muharram, the tenth of Dhul Hijjah, month of Ramadan, 15th of Sha'aban, all of these important dates, they are more closely connected to our minds because we are following that calendar. But it is only natural that at this time of the year as well, we are thinking about the year that has gone by because we inevitably also follow the Gregorian calendar. So the doctors will think about how they did with their patients over the last year. The businessmen will think about how their businesses did over the last year. The teachers will think, how did my students perform? Was I able to communicate with them? We as believers, as Muslims, should also think, how did I perform over the last year as a Muslim? How much did I accept the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How much did I use the favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to me? In many places in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us over and over again about the fact that He has favored us as human beings on the face of this earth. And He has favored us as well as Muslims because we understand the favors and where they came from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah number 16, verse number 34, وَسَّخَّرَ لَكُمُ الشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرِ دَائِبَيْنِ وَسَّخَّرَ لَكُمُ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارِ Allah says that He subjugated for you, He subjugated for you the sun and the moon, moving continuously, moving constantly, moving in a pattern. Subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَسَخَّرَ لَكُمْ He has subjugated the sun and the moon for you. Whoever thought that the movement of the sun and the moon, it is for the human being. Its movement creates the climate, the different seasons, winter, summer, spring, autumn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is for the mankind. And Allah says, and we are here subjugated for you the day and the night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put these things in place so that we can become productive, progressive. The night comes so that we can rest. The day comes so that we can see. And with the light of the sun, we can improve our lives. We can work, we can earn. We can trade, we can build. So the, the day and the night, the seasons, the world around us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put it for us. 
He says as well in the next verse, وَآتَاكُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ مَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُ And he gave you whatever you asked for. The Mufassirin says that this means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for the human being whatever the human being needs in this world. He needs air to breathe, Allah gives him that. He needs food to eat, Allah gives him that. He needs companionship, Allah gives him that. Whatever we need in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us. And other tafsir of this is that whatever we ask for, whatever du'as we make, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers those du'as either by giving us what we have asked for or by keeping away from the du'a with the du'a that we make some trial or test or punishment that were due to us or by giving us the reward of that du'a instead of giving us what we ask for in this world, giving it to us in the hereafter. But by making du'as, we never lose. So Allah says, and we, He gave you whatever you asked for, whatever you need in this world. And then Allah says in the next part of the verse, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا Allah says, and if you were it to count the favors of Allah, the bounties of Allah, you would not be able to count them. And if we were to start to list them from the human being himself, his physical body, to his surroundings, to his family, to his career, to his, the country that he lives in, to whatever else, we will never be able to end in all of these different bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. And therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us the question, and it's a question we can ask ourselves at this time of the year, how do I benefit from the bounties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to me personally? The strength that I have, the intelligence that I have, the spouse and children that I have, the properties Allah has given to me, the abilities Allah has given to me, how do I use them? Am I grateful to Allah and show that gratitude by performing my salah on time, by staying away from the haram things, do I show gratitude for the bounties Allah has given to me? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in a hadith, Kullun he says, every human being, every single person, يَغْدُو فَبَائِئُن فَنَفْسَهُ فَبَائِئُن نَفْسَهُ he says, every person, he goes out in the morning and he sells his soul. Subhanallah. Really interesting way of putting it. Allah says, the Prophet says, every person goes out in the morning and he sells his soul. It means when a person gets up in the morning, he gets up and he starts to do things. Nobody just gets up and stays still for the whole day and then goes to sleep. But he gets up and he sells his soul. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, فَمُعْتِكُهَا أَوْ مُوْبِكُهَا So he either frees it or he destroys it. It means that a person gets up in the morning and he starts to do things. The things that he does collectively as a whole will either be leading him towards the Jannah or they may be leading him towards the Jahannam. He's either freeing his soul from the Jahannam or he is destroying his, whole, his soul towards the Jahannam by his actions. But of course during the day we will do a mixture of actions. We will do some good things, we will do some bad things. That is why subhanallah when we perform our salah the Minor sins we did before, between the last salah to this one, they are also expiated. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is saying, every day a person gets up and he sells his soul. Either he frees his soul or he destroys his soul. So every single day is adding towards your account. What is my net balance? The businessman will understand. What is my net balance today? Is my net balance positive or negative? Did I earn more good deeds than sin? Or do my sin today outweigh my good deeds? And if they do, then I am leading my soul towards its destruction. 
So every day a person has to think. And as the end of the year comes, we have to think, how did that last year of mine go? Did I free my soul a little last year? Have I destroyed my soul a little last year? What's my overall position at the end of this year? And why is it important to do that? Because you know that this process will come to an end. Allah tells us in Surah Jumu'ah, قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعَمَلُونَ Certainly that death that you are running away from, it is going to meet you. فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ It is going to catch up with you. That death that you are running away from, that we can think about it, that not next year, not the following year, maybe inshallah in 25 years from now, I will have to face death. But the reality is that we don't know when that death is going to come. So Allah says that death that you are running away from, meaning that you, are, you don't want to think about death. We don't talk about that difficult subject. We only want to talk positive things. We don't want to think about ever coming to an end, leaving everything behind. But Allah says that it is going to catch up with you. You're going to meet it. And then Allah says, ila alim al -ghayb. Then you are going to be returned to that one who knows that which is unseen and that which is seen. Then everything that was done, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show that he knows about it. And Allah says, فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ And he will tell you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell us about that which you have been doing. And therefore, it's a good time for us to think about our accountability that has to come to us. As Umar is quoted as saying, call yourselves to account. Call yourselves to account before you are called to account and weigh yourselves before you are weighed. Not physical weight. Weigh yourselves, meaning weigh where you are on the scale of things. How have I progressed towards living a life that pleases my Creator? How far am I away from that? And it does not mean that we change our lives in such a way that we stop doing the halal things that we do as well. But it means that we ensure that we are doing that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded for us every single day of our lives. But every year, you know, we will hear these kinds of sermons and khutbas that remind us about accountability. And every year, you know, we tell ourselves, I am a Muslim, I know I am a Muslim, and I know I have to do this. I know that Allah wants me to pray five times a day. I know that I am supposed to stay away from alcohol. I know that as a believer, I cannot be involved in this haram relationship. But yet, it proves impossible to change. So I want to offer, because you know, when people, the general masses of the human beings around this time of the year contemplate on how they have spent their lives, or they've spent the last year, they always tend to come up with resolutions. The New Year's resolutions. I resolve next year I'm not going to eat as much as I ate last year. I resolve next year I'm not going to watch as much television as I watched last year. I resolve this and I resolve that. And of course, resolutions are good, but sometimes they are difficult to, fo to follow through with. But I want to offer some resolutions as well. For us as believers, three resolutions that we need to make. Some of us to great degrees, some of us to small degrees, and perhaps some of us not at all. That we've already passed that stage. But the first resolution, and they all begin with the letter P, so I hope we can all remember them. The first resolution I want to make as a believer for the next year is I want to bring passion in my life. 
I want to bring passion. Because the reason why we don't practice Islam is because we don't love Islam enough. We don't feel that closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enough. So we need to develop passion for deen, passion for Islam, love Islam. So much so that we want to leave everything and come to the masjid to perform our salah. So much so that we want to give up everything and do something that will give us some reward. But passion requires ilm. It requires knowledge. We won't become passionate about something unless we know the benefit of that thing for us. Unless we know how it's going to benefit us. So we need to learn about Jannah. What Allah has in store for those people who are His obedient servants. We need to learn about Jahannam. About what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in store for those who have rejected Him. And one of the ways of putting this knowledge into our Heart is to give the da'wah of it, to remind each other of it as well. So when we give da'wah, we build passion for deen as well. So we learn about what Allah wants from us, we give invitation to that as well. And the third thing that will, will, will bring passion is to seize every single opportunity that we find to do some good. Like the brother last night for Isha who was holding the door open for people to pass and I said that's a good job and he said that you know anything for blessings. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah says those people who struggle. So that struggle is the developing of a passion for deen. Those who, that jihad here means those who struggle and strive. Because it's not going to come to you on a silver platter. Your closeness and connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come when you make an effort, when you do the dhikr of Allah, when you put five times salah in your, in your lives. So Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا Whosoever struggles and strives in our path to do the right thing, we will certainly take them to our paths. We will put that passion in their hearts. We will give them that zeal and that, that desire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is with those people who are the muhsinun, the people who do good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who do good. And the second resolution that I want to make for myself for the new year is that I want to be persistent. Because sometimes we have the passion, but we don't have the drive. We have the passion, like we start the engine in the car, but we don't put in the gear. And we mash the accelerator, but we go nowhere. Because we have not, we don't have the persistence, we don't have the perseverance. So we need to have persistence in deen. Because in our businesses we are persistent, we don't give up in our businesses, we make sure our businesses are successful. As students we don't give up, we make sure and pass our examinations. But with deen, you know, we give up, we give up. The time for the Fajr Salah comes 10 minutes earlier. Now that's too hard. We stop coming for Fajr Salah. The time for Ramadan comes, you know, we can't fast. We find some excuse. To pay our zakah, it's difficult. We've got to develop that perseverance and persistence. And in order to do that, we've got to focus. Focus on our goals. Our goals are to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thereby He will give us Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking to the Sahaba concerning the battle of Uhud. He says to them, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu malakum, or you who believe, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Ida kila lakum in firu fi sabil lahi tha kaltum ila al awd. أَرَضِيتُمْ بِالْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا مِنَ الْآخِرَةِ 
فما متاع الحياة الدنيا في الآخرة إلا قليل. Or you who believe, what is wrong with you? What is the matter with you that when it is said you come out in the path of Allah, this is for the jihad, the real jihad, was not battle of Uhud, battle of Tabuk. For the real jihad, some people stayed back. Allah says, when it is said to you, come out in the path of Allah, you turn heavy, you become lazy. You cling to the ground. Have you become happy with the worldly life instead of the hereafter? So Allah says the enjoyment of the worldly life is little, qaleel, compared to the hereafter. So the second resolution I have to make is that I'm not going to let laziness take over my pursuit of happiness. I'm not going to be a non-finisher. Many of us start, but we don't finish. We start a class. We say, I'm going to learn to read the Quran this year. We start, and in the middle of the class, we stop. That's not what we're going to do. We have got to be persistent and consistent. And we should make a dua as much as we can. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us this dua. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min من الحمي والحزن. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from grief, ham, والحزن, and from sadness. والأجزي وال, والكسر. And I seek refuge in you from weakness and from laziness. From weakness and laziness. Wal-bukhli wal jubani and I seek refuge in you from miserliness and from cowardice. And I seek refuge in you from being overcome by debt. That I am owing so much money that I feel I can't get out of this debt. And by men, by people who control our lives and make us turn in directions we don't want to turn. So this is a dua that we should teach ourselves and learn and recite that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us persistence and perseverance. And you can get a copy of this dua afterwards, inshallah, downstairs. This is a dua from the Hadith of Bukhari that teaches us, asks Allah not to give us that quality of laziness, that we never complete what we've started. We never reach that goal. We always lose focus. But inshallah, our resolution this year is for persistence. And the final resolution is going to be for patience. The common P word that's so very important. And we need patience because we are going to get trials. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Never is a believer stricken with a discomfort, with an illness, with an anxiety, with a grief or a mental worry, or even the pricking of a thorn Except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expiate his sins because of his patience. And therefore, this hadith is saying a number of things. One is that there are going to be trials. And two, that with the trials, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to have patience. And three, with that patience, we are going to get the expiation of our sins and elevation in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need patience from trials. We also need patience from temptation. As Allah says in chapter 2 verse 208, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُبِينٌ Do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. He is to you an open enemy. And we all need patience against the temptations that beleaguer us every day. The temptation to backbite and to slander. The temptation to drink alcohol and to gamble. The temptation to commit fornication and adultery. The temptation to have jealousy and hatred. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned he was sitting with the Sahaba in the masjid. 
and he says the next person to come in the masjid, he is the Jannati. And the person was Sa'ad bin Abi, Abu, Abi Waqas, and the next day the same thing happened, and the third day the same thing happened. So one of the Sahabi said, I'm going to stay with Sa'ad to see why. And he didn't see anything different from Sa'ad's behavior. So he told him, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, the next person to come into the masjid is the Jannati, and you walked in for three days in a row at the same time that he said it. And Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas said, I didn't do anything different, I don't do anything different except that I don't hold anybody in my mind. That in the night, whatever transpired between me and another brother or another sister, I exclude from holding that and keeping that. So those are the temptations that we will have to fight against by having patience that I don't keep that temptation of holding somebody in mind or being jealous of the properties of others or having hatred and anger. And the third part of patience is to be patient against the opposition to Islam that will face us as believers. Because we've seen the opposition just starting. We've seen what has happened with the naming of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. We've seen all of the different attacks against believers in different ways around the world. And that is not the ending of it. That is just the beginning of it. And what we need to have is patience and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in that verse of the Quran that I recited at the beginning that with patience, in order to get patience, we need to put trust in Allah. We need to put trust in Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in young surkum Allahu fala ghaliba lakum. If Allah helps you, then there is none who can overcome you. If Allah decides to help you in any single situation in this world, whether personal or collective, then there is none who can overcome you. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forsakes you, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abandons you, then who is there who can help you after that? Who is there who can help you after that? So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, have patience and keep turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never forsake your duty towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says that, and in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the believers should place their trust. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the believers should place their trust. So as we contemplate the ending of this year and the starting of a new year, let us try to improve as we try to improve other aspects of our lives, our deen as well, our Islam as well. Let's try to put these three resolutions in place. I'm going to develop a passion for Islam. I'm going to persevere in my practicing Islam. And I'm going to have patience when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests me, when I get opposition, I will have patience and put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kulu kawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum wa li sa'idil muslimina min kuli dhamb. Fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-gafuru rahim.